Amen. Amen. If we can have our prayer team to come up front. If anybody needs prayer, we'll have them up front. Let's put our hands together for him this morning. How many of you are excited to come to the house of God and praise him in unison together? I don't know about you, but I woke up excited to come and sing to him. And I'm even more excited to do this with you guys. He hears us. He hears when we sing to him. He sees when we dance for him. And he smells the fragrance that we give off when we love on him. All he wants is our hearts. All he wants is our hearts. Every single day, not just for a minute or for a second or for an, even an hour. He wants our hearts all the time. I don't know about you, but I'm going to give him my heart this morning. I love to your heart. Why should I be still?
after his heart this morning because I can tell you he's after yours. Hallelujah.
seeking after you yes. if you seek after him my God is looking for you his eyes are going to and fro across this earth looking for somebody who's looking for him hallelujah yes, Jesus. if you're crying out to him he's looking for you yes. he wants to hold you Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, amen. Amen, amen. You can go ahead and have a seat this morning. You know, I was home yesterday and just doing a few things around the house and turned this way and man, my back just, has that happened to anybody? You know, you just turn a certain way and man, you're like, oh, okay, I can't move now. Some, you know. And the first thing I thought about was to be this young and already having back problems. You know, 25 years old and already having back problems. I'm like, wait, something, you know, this is way too young, you know, to be having back problems. But what I did, I ran to the Word of God because that's our healer. Amen. This is, this is what heals us right here. I didn't run to the ibuprofen. Or anything like that, I ran to the Word of God because I knew this was what's going to be that's going to heal me. And it's Luke 13, 10. So there was a woman there who had been crippled for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up. Man, I was like that too. I was like, oh man, you know, you just can't straighten up for nothing. 
When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. If you are in here today and you are in pain, Jesus is our healer. And not just physical pain, back pain or arthritis, anything like that. But maybe your heart is hurt. You're in pain. God is, God is your, your father, your friend. Everything you need, whatever it is, God is there for you. So always run. And just like that was the last words on the song, we, I'll come running to you, Lord. That's what God wants. He doesn't want us hurt and, and in bed laying down and, and feeling sorry for ourselves. And I can't do this anymore. I can't do that anymore. No, get, get a hold to the word of God. Let God heal you. Let God speak to your heart. Amen. Everything we need is in this word. Amen. Give the Lord another big hand clap of praise. Yes, and as you see, I am walking fine this morning because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. Well, welcome, welcome everyone. Miracle Place Church, Baker, Louisiana on a beautiful Sunday morning. Anyone's first time visiting with us here at Miracle Place, if you could raise your hand, we'd like to say hello to you, see where you're from. Anyone first time? Yes, sir, right here on the front row. Where are you from, sir? New Orleans. New Orleans. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome to you. Okay, we have someone over here. Where are you from, sir? Zachary. Welcome. Let's give him a hand. Back there, yes, ma'am. Where y'all from? Where are you from, ma'am? Columbia, Mississippi. Welcome. Welcome. Anyone else? I don't want to miss anyone else. Is that it? Well, amen, amen. They just handed you all a card there. If you could fill that out. Uh, your name, address, if you have an email address, please put that down. We send out a daily devotion, and we'd like to add you to the list. Also on the back, there's a place for prayer requests. If you have any prayer needs, please fill that in. We have ladies who come during the week here and pray over all those cords and all the prayer requests. The church, each and every one of you here, all these seats are walked and touched and prayed over, amen, before service and at our Denim, and Sp uh, Denim Springs campus also. So welcome everyone here. Uh, we're going to be collecting our tithes and offerings in a couple minutes, so if you want to go ahead and get that ready, and at this time we'll watch MPC 77 News. For such a time as this, he's calling, wake up child, it's your turn to shine. Stay up to date at MiraclePlaceChurch.org. And at this time, we ask that you silence all cell phones, bring your children to the age-appropriate locations, and prepare your hearts for Bishop's message. All right, amen. Amen. Like it said up there, a couple of things going on this Friday. We have eruption this Friday right here, and our care pastor workshop which will be here also this friday so please mark your calendars i know you might have seen in the bulletin that eruption was last friday but it did get moved to this friday so don't miss out lots of excitement and praise and worship all right let's look at our tithe scripture this morning it's uh, matthew 10 42 and if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple Truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. You know, a lot of us think that we have to, whenever we do something or give, that it has to be big, you know, a birthday present, anything like that. We think, okay, it's got to be big and special because I want it to count. But God is saying it does not matter. The size does not matter. If Whatever you do, your generosity Whatever you give, believe me, your reward is there in heaven waiting for you. 
So God will give you lots of opportunities, small opportunities. So take hold of those small opportunities. Bless someone when you can. Always listen to what God's telling you in your spirit. You know, if it's to pay for someone's meal, you know, uh, just to buy someone a Coke, whatever it is. God always gives us opportunities, no matter how big or small. Amen. Amen. Hold up your offering. Let's go ahead and pray over that this morning. Father, we come to you right now. We thank you for this opportunity right now, Father, to give. We are in your house, Father, right now. We thank you for all these opportunities that you've given us, Father, to be generous, to be kind, to help others. It's not only about monetary value, God. It's about being a servant helping others, God, with whatever they need. Maybe it's a neighbor that needs help at their house, cutting down a tree, raking leaves, Father. All those things, those are our rewards, Father. So I ask that you bless each and every one that are here today, Father. Bless them, Father. Prosper them. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Everyone says amen, amen. hands together one more time for Jesus Christ. Yes, we have a very special guest with us this morning, Pastor Robert Early and his beautiful wife with us here. He will be bringing us the word. So let's give him a big Miracle Place Church welcome. All right, Bishop Early. Amen. Amen. Been friends with Bishop for how long, man? Yes, his spiritual son. Amen. Amen. Well, all right. Pastor Robert, we thank you very much for coming. Bless you. I love you so much, man. Amen. Praise God. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. (laughs) I love you, man. I heard that he was the uh, bishop is his spiritual son. You know what that makes us, huh? (laughs) We're his grandkids. Amen. (laughs) So let's give a shout. Yeah, praise the Lord. We bless God in the house. Amen. That's right. He is my spiritual son. Proud of the work and anointing that the Lord is doing through his life. And through your life, because naturally you are a reflection of the grace of God that has been imported into his spirit. And without a doubt, he's doing such a wonderful thing in this house. And not only that, he has always had a universal anointing. He's always had a worldwide evangelistic spirit. And I thank God we've been praying for many years that he can manifest in that in a greater way. And the Lord is opening some doors. So keep your bishop in prayer because the Lord is exposing him to all the world. Amen. That was something prophetically uh, proclaimed in his life some many, many years ago when he was still a babe. Amen. But the love of God was so prominent that he knew that there's a uniqueness in who loves his people and those are they who he will dispatch with a great anointing to reach the masses amen we give obedience to god the father our lord and savior jesus christ and of course to the precious gift of the holy ghost amen to my spiritual son your bishop in his absence to pastor anthony a man who is here who treats us with nothing but love i tell you every time i get a call from him i can just see the love exuding he takes care of me y'all amen he takes care of me my first lady is here amen my beloved wife carolyn early is here so we bless the lord for her 
Uh, we bring love from Victory Faith Fellowship Family Worship Center in New Orleans, where the Lord has allowed us the privilege to be able to represent his name. So we ask now that you uh, turn your Bibles. I'm going to look in two passages of scriptures. As I was sitting there, the Spirit of God just moved on me in a different way, and I'm just going to let him have his way. Amen. There is a prophetic anointing in the house on today. I travel a lot, and we minister in different places, and oftentimes when I look at the life of a believer, the normal thing that I hear is that they're not experiencing the manifestation of what the word has said. And how many of you know that if you're going to walk with God, you have to be ready for a journey? Amen. You have to be ready for a journey because a journey prepares you to be able to embrace the blessing when God brings it. Because I have found that if he allows his manifested blessing to arrive in your life before time, you will abuse it and not understand it. So there is a foundational uh, 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 undergirding that God gives, uh, 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 edifying of your personal life in order that you can receive the things of God. But today is prophetic time. I'm prophetic because I believe that God has brought you to a season where there are going to be some breakthroughs in this house on today. Ah, Y'all better get excited with me. I, 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 you know I'm a teacher by nature, but I feel like preaching today. I'm going back to my Baptist roots today. I, I really feel like God has brought about an anointing in this house that he's going to shake some things. He's going to allow us to see who he has created us to be, and you better be willing to take the step to be all that God has called you to be. Do I have some Can I challenge you in the house on today? Can you believe God for who he created you to be today? Can you, can, do you know that God has made an investment in your life and because he has, he's looking for a return? I'm speaking to some mighty men of valor in the house today. I'm speaking to some women that's able to do exploits for the Lord because the Bible says the people who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm in that number. I'm going to do exploits because God has already preordained it to be so. And it's time out for mediocrity. It's time out for us to be sitting in the house of God, sitting under all this anointing and not manifesting it through our daily lives. So we're going to speak prophetically today. So if I'm talking to you about something that you have not yet seen or witnessed on the outside, don't be alone because it's on the inside waiting on you to bring it to the outside. So there's anointing in the house today where God is going to just reignite some things. There's going to be some revitalization in your spirit in order that you can know that God has not forsaken you. So the things he's promised, they're still there. But he's waiting on certain things from you in order that when it manifests, God can get the glory. Because he wants to bless you. He wants to bless your life in the house. Won't be long. Won't be long today because we got denim to go to, but at the same time, want to be a, want to allow the Spirit of the Lord to have its way. Open your Bibles with me, and out my teleprompter technician, go to Hebrews, and I want to read some passage of scripture out of that twelfth um, chapter. Hebrews chapter twelve, and I want you to look with me at verse twenty-three. Mm. prophetically speaking the spirit of the Lord is speaking to the church on today look how it reads it says to the general assembly and church of the firstborn which was what written which are written in heaven and to God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Notice in your Bibles, spirits there is a what? A small s. Am I right? So that's not talking about the Holy, Holy Ghost. It's not talking about the Holy Spirit. Touch yourself. Say it's talking about me here. The spirits of just men made perfect. Meaning the capacity to mature is within you if you allow God to do a work in your life. 
24 says, and Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, to the blood of the sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that you refuse not him that speak it. For if they escape not who refuse him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that what? Speak it from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised saying, yet once more shall I not the earth only, shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more signified the removing of those things that are shaken, as of the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Turn also with me to Genesis chapter 1. And I want to focus on some verses there in order that we can marry these scriptures in order that the Lord can speak prophetically unto you today. Truly, this is an awesome God that we serve. This is a God that is doing exploits in the earth, and we want to be able to expand those exploits by allowing the maturation and maturity process to take place in our life. Look what it says in verse 9. This is the events of the third day in creation. And it's important that we pay attention because when you get into the book of Genesis, it is known uh, in theology as the book of beginnings. In the book of beginning, there are things called the first mentioned. And the first mentioned things are important because they set a foundation that proves a lineage of revelation throughout the whole Bible. It's important that we understand that simply because sometimes when we're attempting to interpret or exegete scripture, we find ourselves complicating scripture because they have been filtered with the interpretation of man and not God. But in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, in the book of beginning, when God makes a first mentioned statement, the principles that brings authority to what he's saying is vividly laid out. And that's why it's so important that Genesis is looked at not only as a historical book, but a book of spiritual revelation where God shows himself and shows his mind and his purpose. It's important that we understand that. Listen how it reads in verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered unto what? One place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called seas. And God saw that it what? Was good. Look at 11, key verse of interest. And God said, let the earth bring it forth grass. The herbs yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after what his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass and herbs yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that what it was good and the evening and the morning were what? Were the third day. Help me teach and preach this. Look at your name and say, neighbor. I just want to say to you, it's your season. Come forth. Prophetically, God is saying, it is our season to come forth. There are things that God has invested in our life from the very inception of our new birth reality. 
When God calls a thing, he equips it to be able to perfect the purpose that it was designed to perfect. God is never going to haphazardly put something on earth that does not have a redeeming quality that's going to bless the environment that he put it in. If God has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, you are supposed to be a reflection of light and not darkness. So if God has made that type of change in your nature, he's looking for your nature to make a change in your environment. Everywhere you go, you need to reflect the goodness of God. Am I right about it? See, this is the mention of the first mention. Why? Because I call this the principle of, oh, I want to see it in order that it's clear. The principle of reproduction. If you look at the account of the first day, God said, let there be light. And there was light. If you look at the second day, it's talking about what? It's talking about the skies and it's talking about the separation of the waters. But the reality is in the third day, he spoke a word that produced living things. So if he spoke a word that produced something alive, it was the law of reproduction. He spoke to the earth and he said to the earth, do what? Let there be. So when he spoke to the earth, the life principle was in the earth and it didn't come forth until he spoke to it. See, the seed was already in the ground. It was just waiting on God to speak a word that gave life to it and then it can fulfill its initial potential. See, God has placed things in your life that in a right season, God is going to speak to it and when he speaks to it, it's going to produce a harvest that bring God some glory. See, I thought y'all be more excited about that. See, things in your life has been there before you ever got into the earth. God knew who you were. And because he knew who you were, he put things in you that would make a difference in the earth and bring glory to his name. The Bible didn't say God just came down and started planning. He spoke something. And when he spoke a word, that which was laying dormant came to life. I want you to know there's some things laying dormant in your life. There's some things inside of you that God has already placed there, and he is your fertilizer. God is the one that's going to be able to bring you some water. He's the one that's going to bring you some light, and when he brings it, your life going to never be the same. Are you with me here? God says it is your season to come forth. I love this word, come forth. Now, if it's, this is the principle of first mention and it is the law of reproduction, now I need to look at this in the principles that's established in the Old Testament and correlate that with this new reality that I call spiritual life. See, Jesus is the firstborn, am I right about it, amongst many brethren. The Bible says in Romans 8, 29, for whom he foreknew, to them did he predestinate to become what? The firstborn amongst many brethren, that we should be conformed to the image of his dear son. I like that word imic in the Greek. The word image is echion. It literally means a prototype, which means I'm not just a resembler of Jesus. It means that I've been drawn out of Jesus. It's a different to look like something and to be a part of something. Y'all remember how God created man. Am I right about it? What he said, he said, in the beginning, God said, let us make man. 
in our image and in our likeness. Man was not a resemblance of God. He was a drawn out of God. Am I right about it? So when you think about the prototype, an archetype is in heaven, and that means we're drawn out of the original. So when you see me, you should see Jesus. So if I'm going to come forth, you're not looking at just me. You see my shell, but what comes out of my shell should be a reflection of the character of Christ. I'm here to tell you today that you shouldn't, you are not the same mere man. If God has blessed your life, he has made an investment in you, and that investment should bring glory to his name. Now, if you're not walking in it, it's not God's fault. You have just chosen not to come forth. Because every time you come to the house of God, God is speaking. And when he speaks, it should be revitalizing that which lays dormant in your life. And when God is saying something on the inside and you get a revelation of it, it should bring about a harvest. Oh, y'all better hear me in here. A harvest is that which produces that which was heard on the inside that now has been manifested on the outside. God is an awesome God. He's a God that knows where we are. So the first thing we need to remember about coming forth is that it cannot happen without a word from God. You got to have a word. Because the word of God, they're spirit and they are life. Am I right about it? See, this word is different from the Logos. The Logos is God's revealing himself in the written word, and Jesus is the Logos. But when you deal with God himself speaking in his essence, every time he speaks, it's rhema. It's a quickening word. It's a word that when it hits your spirit, it must produce life because there is no death in it. So when God spoke to the earth and told it to bring forth, it had no choice because the word is alive coming out of the mouth of God. And God is given some rhema word in this house, this sanctuary. Every time you come in here, there's a word from God. It may not be every word, but there is a word. Because every word that you hear may not quicken your spirit, but there's something going to quicken your spirit because God didn't bring you here for nothing. It's alive. It's a word that's able to shut off the habits in the death of the old nature and resurrect the newness of life that's in the new. It is a journey. So on this journey, we need to be ready to allow ourselves to deal with the struggle of fruitfulness. Because whenever a word hits you, the revelation, this quickened word, is always on the inside. And that which is on the inside is hidden from the public. Which means God can give you revelation on the inside, but it has not fully developed to be seen on the outside. Which means you're delivered in your spirit, but what they see on the outside may not be a full reflection of your spirit. I'm trying to help you here. I'm trying to help you to not be discouraged to know that when God speaks to your spirit, now the commitment to bring it out of your spirit to your life becomes your responsibility. It's yours now. God has done his. He gave you revelation knowledge in your spirit. So when it gets there, that is the source of deliverance. But it is not the manifested deliverance, it is the internal deliverance. How many of us have been quickened in the spirit by the ministry of the Holy Ghost? 
One of his ministries is what? To convince the world or convict the world of sin. Am I right about it? How many of you know that that does not exclude believers? Because everything in your life is not born again. Your spirit is born again, but your mind in some areas is still all whacked up. Am I right about it? So whenever the Holy Spirit is speaking, he's talking to your mind that's not yet redeemed, not yet regenerated. And what happens? You get convicted. So when that conviction hits you, what do you do? What do you do? And see, the thing about it is, when it hits you, nobody know but you. So you don't have to be concerned about being embarrassed. I think that's the worst part. Because I think if the conviction hits us and everybody can see it, you know how we are. We, most of us are driven by the opinion of others. We'll hurry up and get right. But because it hits us inside and nobody knows, I think that can be our greatest enemy. Because we're not accountable to anybody on the outside. We know inside, so all we can do is turn a deaf ear. I'm trying to help somebody here. But the conviction, the true deliverance is manifested externally. But it starts on the inside. Where are we today? Are we willing to accept our season of deliverance? Because if you sit under the spoken word, the rhema of God, it has brought a level of conviction. And that conviction is crying out that you can conform to the principles of the word. The kingdom of God is not going to deviate from its standard in order that you can be pleased. Oh, I made somebody angry there. I thought it was the kingdom of God and not the kingdom of whatever your name is. Am I right about it? God has set strategic standards, and those standards are basically to be adhered to 100%. There is no deviation. Because if you are going to be a representative of the archetype, which is the original that's in heaven, you need to reflect his character, his love, his nature. You need to be a representative on earth of who he is in heaven. He paid the price in order that we can have the blessing. Isn't that something? He died in order that we can have life. All of the awesome responsibility to get the gift, none of the burden was placed on us. All of the burden was placed on him, so why can't he expect compliance from us are you with me here he spoke to it and when he spoke to it that which was already inside laying dormant had to obey the rhema of the living God no choice just obey This is, this is something in my study. I found this to be something that was really unique. When you see the third day creation, you'll find that it is the law of reproduction took place, but there were categories with their unique assignments and how they were done. Grass, herb, trees, yielding fruit. All of that is in the area of vegetation. But all of them have a unique purpose in the one goal. In order that the earth can be replenished. Think about it. Everything produces after its own kind. 
An apple tree is not going to give you grapes. So when God spoke to the earth, the seed that was in the earth came forth. So that answered the question, what was here first, the tree or the seed? The seed. But when it comes down to the nature and the evolution of humanity, get this. No offspring precedes his parents. I'm trying to say something here. So even though the earth started off, the, the, the greenery started off with a seed, we started off with a God. Who was our parent? So if you came out of God, that means your whole nature is designed like God. Am I right about it? God said, let us make man in our image and act in our likeness. Am I right about it? 1, 26 and 27. And he said, do what? And God did what? Created him. In his image and in his likeness. And once he created him, then he made him. Well, I just messed somebody up. He created him, Bara, out of nothing. Mm. But he made him out of something that existed. God is spirit. And spirit creates from nothing. So man came out of God, who is spirit, so man is spirit. That's the created man that he knew before the foundation of the world. But then there's a made man that you see in true where he formed him out of the dust. Asa, which means a particle existed already. That was on the hurt, and that is dust. Am I right about it? So when he, the dust was there, he formed him, and now it was time to unite the created man, the spirit man, with the made man. Oh, y'all better get me here. So what he did, he breathed into his nostrils, right? The word breathe there in the Hebrew is nephesh, literally ruach synonymously, meaning God imparted spirit himself. So spirit went in that which was made, and that which was made became, because of spirit, a living soul. I'm trying to help you here. So when you deal with humanity, an offspring must come from a parent. Have I made it clear who your parent is? Do you know who your father is now? You came from God. In your initial lessons, you are a spirit, and you came from God. So if he is the archetype, you are a prototype. And the prototype is not just a resemblance. I told you, he's drawn out of. So if you came out of God, that means all that God is, you have the capacity to represent. Do you want to be a world changer? Your world don't have to be the world all around this globe. Your world can be right within the four walls of your home. Your walls can be within your community. There's different functions in this kingdom. And the way God, so it's not about quality, quantity, how large your world is, but it's about quality. Because God is not going to judge you on quantity. He's going to judge you on quality. So you don't have to be uh, uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes. You can be Bishop so-and-so that rules two rooms in your four-bedroom house. Because your wife might rule the rest. I just, I just need to say that. You might get a couple. You ain't going to get the whole thing. If you do, get up here, repent. I'm going to lay hands on you, and I'm going to tell you to come forth with truth. But the point is that you don't have to be no one else. The assignment that God has given you is to bear fruit. 
and you can bear fruit and bring forth the glory of God. Are oh, you with me here? Think about this. I told you I'm not going to be long. I'm closing real soon. Listen. <laughs> Prophetically, we are the prototype of the archetype. We came from a parent, and this offspring is supposed to resemble the parent because we're drawn out of the parent. There's giftings inside of all of our life, lives, because the Bible said the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. And we know he is no respecter of person. So if I got a gift, you got one. All of us have the gift ministry-wise of reconciliation. Am I right about it? And there are other talents and gifts that we all have that God has innately, intrinsically placed within us. And some of us know that we got a passion and we're good at certain things, but we've not allowed God to speak to it. And if he doesn't speak to it, it does not get the fertilization to be revitalized to reproduce what he wants it to produce. And that means that you have a passion for it and you might be good at it, but it is not being beneficial to those who it was given to you to be a blessing to. Every gift an assignment God gives is given to reflect him to be a blessing in the life of others. No gift is just for you. Every gift is to bring God glory. Final point. When he spoke to it, it obeyed and brought forth. But how was it able to bring forth and fulfill the assignment that was given? The assignment was bring forth. Yield, fruit, herbs. But it couldn't do it unless God had put the nurturing agents in the earth before the command. Oh, I'm trying to help you here. In order for the earth to bring forth, what does it need? It needs light. It needs earth for soil. It needs water. And it needs air. Am I right about it? This was the third day, right? What happened on the first day? God said what? Let there be light. And there was light. Am I right about it? Now, I don't want you to get confused about this light. This light was not the luminaries that the sun and the moon, because if you look at your Bibles, I'm going to mess you up. That was created on the fourth day. And we're talking about the third day. So we're not talking about the sun. We're not talking about the moon because that's the fourth day and we're in the third day. But yet what it takes for the third day to be successful had to be in place before he gave the command. So when he said, let there be light and there was light and there was no sun and the moon, don't you know he was talking about himself? Because God is the light of the world. Am I right about it? He is the one that brings light, life, knowledge, revelation, illumination to all of his creature. Y'all better get it. That's what he did. So he has, we had light because God was present. So we had the light. And we know he separated the waters that were above from the waters that were beneath. Am I right? They're talking about those that was in the atmosphere. He separated those and those that were below. That became the oceans and the seas that we had. And we know if we had open sea, they fell in the hollows in the earth. And the mountains rose or the land rose. So we had now water and earth. And when he separated the expanse that was one chaotic canopy of moisture and substance, now it's been separated, now we got some air in between. So those days before he gave the assignment to come forth, he already provided a sustaining environment in order that the gift can prosper. Oh, I thought y'all would be excited about that. 
Everything, when God calls a gift forth in your life, the sustainer of the gift is already in place before he calls it. When God called you to salvation, wasn't Jesus already sitting on the right hand of God? When he called you out of darkness, wasn't Jesus the mediator before you ever committed any shortcoming or sin? So that which it takes to sustain you when he calls you is already in place because God already knows what you need. He knows our limitations and he knows that we're in a journey. And if I'm in a journey, God knows that if I fall, he got something in place to pick me up. He got something to be able to sustain me in order that I can get up and say, you know something? I fell. I used to stay down, but I'm getting up now. Why am I getting up? Because God is in me, and God is counting on me, and I know that no matter what happens, I'm going to bring glory to God's name. I feel like shouting in here today because I now know it is my season, and I'm going to come forth. I've heard the word of God. He has spoken to me, and if he's spoken to me, he He's provided all the nutrients I need to be successful. Why don't you get up and give God some glory? It's time to come forth. We've been laying dormant in the house. God has made investments in our life, and he's looking for us to come forth. He's waiting on us to be able to change our communities. He's waiting on us to make a difference for the kingdom. Come forth. Everything we need is in place. Because everything we need is in place, we need to just do one thing. Sacrifice and offerings, thou wouldest not. But obedience is better than sacrifice. Why can't we just be obedient to that which God has already sown? And watch God be God. May the Lord bless you in the house. Amen. 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 If we put, sorry, if we put this word together from Thursday night with Brother Don Perkins, where he asked, where are you? Where are you at right now spiritually? Where are you at? And then you add this season. It's, t it's time. So when you put those two, these two messages together, God's saying it's your season. It's your time. Stop just sitting there. You know what's inside. God's been speaking to you. It's time for it to come out. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray this morning. We pray for guidance, God. You've birthed something inside of us. You've planted that seed, God. We need direction now, God, what to do. It is our season. We accept this prophetic word. It is our season. We will begin to move. The earth will be ours. We will use this earth the fertilizer that was given to us and planted in us, we will begin to use it. We will water it. It is our season, God. We want to use it for your kingdom, God, because that's why we were created, to further your kingdom. It is all about you, God. So now use us, God. Show us where to go, what to do, who to speak to, Father. Show us our boundaries. What is it? What is our expanse of our world that we are supposed to take hold of? Father, we thank you for what you're going to do in our lives, God. Now begin to speak to us. Father, we are open right now for your word, Father. We are in your house right now calling down your word. We will be still right now. We will be quiet. 
we will close our mouth and wait for your word, God, in the stillness. Now just wait for God to speak. season and we will now come forth in Jesus name we pray amen amen give the Lord a big hand clap of praise thank you pastor Robert excellent word excellent word amen well, we bless everyone here today you all have a good day be safe going home and we call you blessed everyone watching online on stream we thank you for visiting with us Everyone have a blessed and prosperous day. Amen. Ground earth is quaked before.